will be no more distinction through clothes. Clothes today are illogical, decadent, and too expensive. Clothes of the future will involve unisex. They will be interchangeable. The body itself will become healthier, and fashion will involve beauty through healthy body. The body will not adorn itself by superficial clothing. The body itself will be beautiful. Welcome to the video! And here I am at the art museum because of the contest. Entries needed to encapsulate the theme of fashion as a protest and how to be inspired by the ongoing exhibitions. Aforementioned art museum is also kind of the host of the contest, which I feel like was maybe a roundabout way to get entrance to visit the museum. Hmm. Well, this whole video is just chunks of me working on my contest submissions throughout September interspliced with two second clips of my life. But hope you enjoy, she's a long one. Rudy Gernrich was a fashion designer, starting in illustration from a young age. In his years of work, he began to utilize fashion as a protest. For example, the swimsuit was created with an emphasis on functionality and comfort. By removing all interior structures, the suit takes the natural shape of the wearer, which was a big contrast to the ideal of the cinched waist. Gernreich met Harry Hay, a gay rights activist, who had the early plans for the then unnamed Madachin Society. Gernreich said it was the most dangerous thing he had ever read due to the Lavender Scare, a time when gays and lesbians were widely persecuted. Despite all this, Gernreich was the first to join the society, marking the beginning of the modern gay rights movement. In 1966, Gernreich made his clothes available nationwide at low prices. Although his designs had previously been shown in high fashion locations like Saks Fifth, he turned around and created accessible fashion for women of the time, causing a huge increase in his popularity. Inclusivity was very important to Gernrich, which was rare to see. This dress caught my eye because of its colors and funky patterns, but besides its aesthetic appeal, the garment was created at a time when hippie and youth culture were at a peak thus providing context for the bold flower symbolism. Flower power became the rallying cry for young people as they called for a peaceful end to the war, notably placing carnations in the barrels of rifles held by US soldiers during the march on the Pentagon. To Gernreich, dance and theater represented empowerment. The performer was able to take on a plethora of roles that defied the limitations of societal ones. He managed to bring this idea of being anyone to mainstream fashion through his designs, which emphasized movement and simplicity. Gernreich recognized restrictive fashion was hampering with women's liberation in society. He began to offer fashion choices that were previously unavailable to them. First, the wireless bra. Shout out to Gernreich because I'm a wireless bra gal myself. Mary Quant was a designer that brought the skirt hemline above the knee around the 1960s, pioneering the mini era in fashion. Later, Gernreich followed, expanding the popularity of how short is too short. His micro mini hemline sat 12 inches above the knee and paired well with the mod look, all clean lines and geometry. Additionally, Gernreich and Yves Saint Laurent offered the new alternative, pantsuits. This pushed androgyny into mainstream fashion, and by the 1970s, pants became widely acceptable as formal and professional women's wear. This next part of the museum I visited was about a variety of designers and garments, so let's get into it. Swimwear began evolving from the wool jumpsuit and long skirt combination to the more relaxed tank suits that hugged the form. However, women who wore these suits were at risk of being arrested for public indecency. Later on, the most controversial design dropped, the bikini. However, this piece changed the trajectory of women's swimwear, becoming a global sensation that has lasted to present day. Throughout history, fashion has been wielded as a tool to rebel against restrictions in society. There is an unspoken moral dress code that's acknowledged, and subverting it through designs is revolutionizing but controversial. 
The example here is a dress held together with safety pins. Through this design, the wearer is seen in an intimate moment between concealed and revealed. There are, however, pros and cons to any subversions in any industry. Those who participated in the women's suffrage movement in the early 20th century were criticized by the media as masculine and militant. The group encouraged adherence to the feminine dress codes of the time in order to assuage men's fears of radicalization. Luckily, this resulted in greater tolerance for the movement. On the flip side, there was a lack of intersectionality in the women's movement. The efforts were mainly directed toward the rights of white women over women of color. The pink pussy hat is a recent example of confrontational fashion created in response to the vulgar comments of former President Trump. This hat became a symbol for the Women's March and worked to protest dehumanization of women and destigmatize the word itself. On the other hand, as the public gains more awareness, this symbol is being questioned because it excludes trans people and others in the LGBTQ community. And with that, our brief history segment is over. On to the drawings. It was September 13th when I first sketched out my design ideas. At this point, I was already struggling a bit with the theme for my pieces, which was definitely foreshadowing for the rest of the process. After flipping through my mind a bit, I finally opted to focus on diversity within fashion. I specifically wanted to include underrepresented groups in my illustrations and spent a few days researching hijabi fashion and clothing design for different bodies. I also chose to build around a physical motif due to like the visual nature of drawing, so I decided on the butterfly because of its association with positivity and transformation, but also because of the physical aesthetic of the creature. Also, Luna incorporated diversity extremely well into their butterfly music video, so check that out for some inspiration. My main concern was about the originality of the theme because I felt that a multitude of brands had tackled diversity in the past and I didn't want my work to come off as performative. It wasn't that serious, but honestly, I was having headaches over it, so I typed up an email to my professor with my updates and concerns and sent it along. She replied the next day with positive vibes, so with an assuaged soul, I began drafting one of the compositions I had swimming around in this smooth brain of mine. As you see, I created it digitally so I could alter the figures and flip around the canvas to check for balance and whatnot. I walked into September 19th with the full hardiness only a 19 year old with gallons of optimism can have and I was promptly struck down for my hubris. I was only vibing with my design like 65.9% but forged ahead anyway. I honestly thought that I'd be punching out my pieces super fast, like I really had myself convinced I'd get this piece right on the first try and then I could do 3 maybe 4 more pieces in the same day. You see the delusion? It definitely looks like things are going well here actually. If we're observant, we can pinpoint the exact moment I gave up on this attempt because my brush strokes get way faster and more careless. Like girly knew she messed up. Well, here we are. I remember thinking, you know, attempt one was a fluke, but I'll definitely get this one right. Alas, she was wrong again. Frustration, jail. These first attempts were very inspired by M.Y illustration and their work. The pieces I saw from them in particular had this like delicious ink texture that I wanted to replicate in my own work, so I brought out the old Chinese calligraphy ink to test it out, which ended up being a bit pale from years of disuse, but I used it in lieu of water with my watercolors and it turned out quite nicely. That's what you're seeing now. 
I did some coloring tests on attempt two to at least wring some value out of my mistakes, but to be quite honest, it feels terrible to not like what you're making. So I sat down with both of my pieces and circled the parts I liked best and which parts I absolutely did not like to hopefully incorporate that critique into my third attempt. In just a second, you're gonna see my pieces taped up on the mirror because I needed a new perspective. This is also when my self-doubt set in because all last semester I had honed this very classic fashion illustration style with a twist of my own style thrown in there for seasoning and I was wondering if I had made a mistake trying to attempt pieces in a style that was completely different because in art it's pretty easy to stick to what you know and logically I know art is all about growing and experimenting but it is much nicer on the ego if we relegate ourselves to doing what we know over and over with a little bit of variation to like convince ourselves we're breaking the mold a little bit. Anyway, the situation was looking a bit bleak for me, so I sent an SOS email at like 11 p.m. to my professor, like, help girl, and she replied immediately, like, to unlock feedback, please pay $4.99 a month. I'm kidding. Imagine setting up a paywall for your student. She actually told me we should probably meet in person, and then I thought about the one hour, 15 minute metro ride downtown, like, can I even handle that? The verdict is in and turns out no, I was not able to handle that at all, but more on that at 9. We scheduled for that Friday, September 24th, and girly, I was nervous, a little bit nervous. Forgot to mention why I had to go downtown to see my teacher, so my university moved the whole fashion department to a different campus that's far enough to be inconvenient, but not far enough to justify airing complaints about the move. Like, okay, not them uprooting a whole department and the accompanying staff right when I decided to pursue fashion. Like, alright. Seems like a personal attack to me. Okay, but right after I emailed her saying, help, I'm dying, and I can't draw, and maybe I never could draw, and I shouldn't have even tried this style, I started on a new drawing and things were suddenly going swimmingly, but it's not like I could say in an email, lol, false alarm, I'm drawing just fine now. Whoever came up with professional email etiquette, come meet me outside, you're adding unnecessary stress to my life by not allowing me to send emojis, add exclamation points, and say lol in emails. Enough about emails. Let's talk about September. First of all, it's the most forgettable month. I couldn't tell you a single September I've lived through and remembered. Second, it was absolutely not an ideal time for me to participate in a contest, but it's kind of like I didn't have a choice because the deadline was October 1st. I was juggling coursework, exams, and then I had to commit extra time to my repair construction class because we started on our first big project at the same time. I was pulling my hair out. I was actually going to sleep, dreaming about my current reality, waking up in the current reality, realizing I had my jaw clenched the whole night. This had me stressed, you guys. Stress-infused sleeping aside, there were a few more days before that first in-person feedback pop-off with my professor thingy and we've been watching the formulation of a new composition. So we can see I ditched my original girlies, sorry to them, but they had the incorrect vibes to be quite frank. And they were dampening my mood. On the flip side, I actually love this new piece and so far this voiceover has been kind of a downer. The idea was really playing on that unity concept in a visual way and it felt very balanced to me so I was very, you know, satisfied. The first part of this concept I drew consisted of two flipped figures that are kind of mirrored. I originally traced them onto the big paper skewed toward the left because I was planning on slicing the paper in half, but then I said big brain moment! Let's add two more figures to fill up the space and I was like, you know what? This is my moment, I'm thriving, I'm focused, I'm moisturized, and I'm in my lane. 
Luckily, everything was continuing on pretty well, but I cannot describe the nervousness of using a black liquidy medium with a flimsy brush to try to make lines, lines that can only have one take, one chance for the line art to look good. I had to hype myself up for each brush stroke and I was also under time pressure because I had to go to class soon. I was shaking a bit, the stress of it all. We gotta talk about how permanent traditional art is. Can I please have a control Z? I was freaking out and sweating and peeing and crying and shaking and jumping and popping, wee jumping. Okay, but literally my voiceover has had very little to do with what's on screen. Can we get back on track? I thought this video was about the creative process. So here I was, like yeehaw, completed the line art, now let's do the coloring. But when I started the coloring, I peed my pants figuratively because it looked not so good to me. The coloring by itself is fine, I guess, but I felt it obscured the line, obscured, obscured the line art I had worked so hard on. And I was like, did I make a huge mistake? The coloring style itself also came out of nowhere. I have no idea how I came up with the idea to make like shapes within the colors to add dimension. But now looking back, I am partial to how it looks. I think it adds more depth than the line art provided and playing with the white space heightens the contrast between that and the colors. Nevertheless, I taped the piece on my mirror and sat on the floor looking at it with a hundred thoughts and what ifs and regrets until I had to drive to school, but I brought the piece with me to use the large scanners our design department has just in case I wanted to digitize it and edit out the flop coloring I had done. Also, don't even get me started on the parking fiasco I had that day, I won't discuss it. Let me go over the materials I've been using up till now in case people want to know. For the line art I mentioned, I was using possibly expired calligraphy ink. I used one of those watercolor brushes that has the refillable handle where someone would actually usually put water. I just filled it with the ink instead. My high school art teacher actually gifted me this brush and this was the first time I used it. She also gifted me a kazoo in the same package. I can't believe I've used the kazoo more than the brush. Anyway. I used the Paul Rubens watercolors they sent me for the black line art and for the skin color because if a company is going to send me stuff, you bet I'm going to continue using it. Let's all use what we have, okay? For the hair, I used Copic markers. The colors were selected by me at 12 years old. I really said, let's choose Copic colors by Vibe instead of maybe buying a set or something so we can have a cohesive palette. I'm also using Crayola Super Tips markers, mild liner highlighters, and colored pencils. Anyway, feel free to ask me more questions about the materials if you want or like anything. But also, I will kindly refer you to my materials video for future reference. Next day, I was on my way to get feedback. My professor told me I needed to make, and I quote, dozens of sketches and compositions and to bring everything I had regarding this project. Little did she know, I was not able to draw that much at all and I was deathly afraid of letting her down. So I sat there with my baggage and proceeded to scare myself into thinking I'd be her biggest student disappointment thus far. Okay, so I managed to get in the building and I ran into one of my classmates from last semester and she was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, on my way to be a flop. But yeah, miss my girlies from my illustration class. Also, I was in the hallway outside of the studio and a student recognized me from YouTube and I know I said something foolish, but I don't remember it. So if you are watching this video, shout out to you. I felt so honored, even though my professor and I only talked for like 20 minutes. My girly kind of saved my ass with her feedback. With her advice on which direction to go in, I was feeling pretty inspired. After that though, 
I had a big marketing assignment due the same day, so I wandered around like this downtown campus, which I hadn't ever been to before because I take classes on my university's main campus and somehow I did manage to find a library to do some work, which you saw. I was Dora the Explorer, but alas, my foolishness paired with my terrible sense of direction led me out of the library and around the same surrounding streets four times, but never once in the direction I was supposed to go. I was walking around with what I thought was fake confidence in knowing where I was, but turns out I looked stupid and lost. Some random dude on the street was like, hey, if you're lost, come ask me. And I was like, hell nah, dude. And after that, I managed to walk like two stops down from my actual stop. And some friendly people were able to direct me to my actual stop, so shout out to them. The city is kind of scary. The buildings are so huge and they are like in the sky. Who allowed that? I'm just a child with a tote bag, like against the whole world. Well, whatever. Let's review the feedback a little bit because it did change the trajectory of my work. So first my professor mentioned working on a second piece that had a drastically different composition and style to my first one, like to kind of forget what I've already done, to not even look at my first art for a while, and I don't know what was stopping me from doing this, but I assumed both of my pieces had to be in the same style. It was so odd. There was nothing really stopping me from illustrating in a different style, but once I started with this first one, I was like, oh man, gotta keep going with this, I guess. Second, she brought up a few notes for composition, notably bringing up the styles of ancient Chinese ink paintings, where the colors in the foreground would be bolder and more saturated, and as the piece progressed into the background, there would be paler shades. Because my first piece was a flat composition, I was intrigued with the idea of incorporating depth in a similar way. So these were the main influences on my second piece, though I did take away a lot from just listening to her talk about the art I showed her. I think creating art can be such a solitary task that sometimes it blurs the line between working alone and working with loneliness. Also, this whole time I had tried to step out of my own perspective and look at my pieces from an objective stance but what I needed was someone else's subjective perspective. There's definitely value in receiving opinions, like not even critiques that pushes you in a direction you never would have thought of otherwise because I was stuck in my head with my artwork for a while. I just needed a little chat, you know? Even unrelated thoughts can kind of prompt an idea. Can you believe it rained in September in Arizona? I feel like that was a fluke because it's like 92 degrees Fahrenheit right now. At the end of October, when can I wear jackets and sweaters? This is so odd. More on the art though. I instinctively knew that I would be using my Muji gel pens for my second artwork. If I were to play on the opposite style advice, this piece would have to be art that is extremely detailed and incorporate every single part of the subjects. Does that even make sense? Let me explain a bit. Piece number one was just a bit more abstract than I usually do. While I did want to accentuate the clothing, I also wanted to pull focus to how each figure was connected through the line work. It makes it less realistic because I didn't draw each pleat or each fold, but rather conveyed the idea of these elements existing without like physically portraying them. Sometimes leaving out certain parts in a piece can create more meaning and cohesiveness, if that's what you're going for, than if you tried to copy every single detail. Piece number two would be the opposite of the first one in that I would show each figure in like full 4K high definition detail, 
but the faces would be obscured by butterflies, you know, for a little juxtaposition. On the one hand, this is another way to depict unity, the similarity in the butterflies. On the other hand, I needed the viewer of the piece to be able to see themselves in the artwork, and I knew the more specific each figure was, the less the viewer would be able to project onto it. So I was keeping the figures here nondescript. They could be anyone. Oh, and I layered each butterfly lady on top of each other at different places within the environment because I was thinking of the ancient Chinese ink painting thing we talked about earlier. I was intent on getting more depth in there through perspective and through color. I recorded a voice note on September 26th gonna insert it here so we can have a taste of how I was feeling, but apologies in advance because I was really close to my phone microphone. I'm currently working on the last butterfly person for this piece, and I'm extremely stressed out. I'm like fighting for my life right now because I have so much homework and then I have tests. And like this whole time I've been juggling six classes, I've also had to like work on this contest and I feel like it is very difficult to channel your creativity and also like try to record it, which is not to say like I don't like doing this because it's been fun to explore new concepts and kind of push my boundaries because without the contest I probably would not be drawing as frequently as now, but also I kind of miss doing art for myself, which is fine because in like two weeks I'll be able to do that. But right now I feel like I'm in the, like the hardest part. So trying to do this while juggling homework has been a main source of stress. Like yesterday, I tried to take a nap but I ended up just lying there and then my heart rate was just increasing but then I felt like I couldn't move and I was under my comforter so I was just sweating profusely for two hours trying to relax and then I gave up so I got up and did my homework. I feel like I'm about to like collapse or something like I'm reaching my stress limit but the plan is to try and finish the line art on this drawing that you are probably watching and the deadline for the contest is october 1st so i have to go see my professor again next week to hopefully get feedback that like everything looks good and i really want to have more options so she can because she said she would help me choose which pieces to use because you can only submit two but right now i only have like one and three quarters pieces done so if i only have two that's like not really a choice i'm gonna have to submit both of them so i'm like maybe i can squeeze in creating one more or two more pieces but even that seems like a stretch because i'm so busy now hopefully i can vlog a bit more because currently i have just been trying to get by and i realize i don't have that much footage to use of me like i want to be in the video also not just the drawing because i want you guys to see the full experience but also i don't want to vlog myself when i'm feeling like frustrated gonna keep pushing and hopefully we can win this thing because no because at first i was like hey like maybe this will be a good experience and then i was like i kind of want to win this and then i went to see my professor and she was like i want you to win this so bad and i was like well now i have to you know <laughs> my spine is turning like into a shrimp shape because i'm hunched over my desk my joints hurt and then like i go to bed and i'm so stressed out that like in my dreams it's just like different outcomes of like the contest does that make sense like I'm like dreaming of the future and then I wake up and my jaw is clenched and I realize I've been like hunching my shoulders against myself the whole night so I wake up also exhausted. I don't know. 
This doesn't even sound like a big deal now that I'm saying it, but I've been talking for seven minutes now, so probably like none of this is that important. Anyway, see you guys later, I guess. Well, that was kind of a huge bummer, but that's life. Art is not so easy, y'all. It looks easy, but it's even hard to make it look easy, I feel like. But something else that happened on this day was that we hit 10k. Thank you guys for the support. I'm gonna do my best. Okay, but I wanted to tell y'all a story at the beginning and I couldn't fit it in, but it wasn't that necessary for the context of the intro, but it's kind of funny, so I'm gonna tell it now. Is that okay? Like the video if that's okay. Subscribe if it's super okay. Okay, part one, flashback to August 30th, 2021, when this whole thing started. So I woke up and I was like, hmm, I feel like I'm gonna see my fashion illustration professor from last semester. One, I was going off of vibes alone, and two, in reality, this was extremely unlikely because of the previously mentioned like department relocation thing. But when the universe sends you the energy that indicates you will see your emotional support professor, you have to dress for the occasion. So I did. I will insert a drawn picture of my outfit here. Or maybe I won't. It's pretty much in the same vein of outfits I wear throughout this whole video. I only have one pair of shorts that fit me, so if you see me wearing these shorts in all my footage, mind your business. Some of us are built like an old refrigerator. Anyway, what was I talking about? Right, so I had a premonition of sorts that I would see her. So I'm in class. And then class is over. I'm like, okay, according to my senses, I'm going to have to bide my time for a while. So I went and served looks in the library. Now, I just did homework there. I wasn't serving anything of the sort. So then it's around 6 p.m. I forgot to mention I'm carrying my backpack, lugging my scooter, and toting around this moderately sized sewing toolkit with like six yards of muslin crumpled inside a beat up tote bag. I look like I'm Lewis and Clark at the same time. I have more physical baggage than emotional at this point. So I start trekking back to the fashion building because I'm like, let's just put my stuff in one of those empty lockers they have in the halls that I'm not sure I'm allowed to use and just go home. So I'm there squatting in this dark hallway. It's significantly darker than I would like and I'm trying to figure out if I want my long ass 18 inch ruler sticking out of my backpack or if I should also ditch her in this locker along with all my crap. When a figure walks into the hall in from the main hallway, like at first faced away from me and I was like, hmm, okay. And then she turns around and I was like, is that her? Miss girl in the flesh and she glances at me and obviously I look like a tiny gremlin crouched in the hall So she walks away and I was like, well, I could get into the prophecy industry because I am out here predicting stuff with like 98% accuracy So I kick all my stuff into a locker that is not mine and I go after my professor who's not actually my professor this semester and I turn the corner into the hall and there is nobody there. It is peak liminal space in this building right now. I'm doubting my own vision. I wear glasses, so it's not that great to begin with. But if I start seeing like phantom teachers, that's just not something I want on my track record, you know? So I kind of walk down the hall and I'm like, insert name here, hello. And I see her office door open, so I barge in and it was her. Can I get a yeehaw? Okay, I'm assuming you said yeehaw, so let's continue. I was like, hey bestie, you probably didn't recognize that creature squatting at the end of the dim dank hallway, but that was me. And then we had a reunion that lasted all of 10 minutes because she had just stopped by to pick stuff up all around good time and it goes to show that I have a career in future reading. I literally forgot the part that relates this story to my video. Okay, so she was like, email me girly and I knew I wasn't gonna do that because like I said, I'm scared of professional emails. After days of thinking literally what I would even email her about, imagine I just like 
Hey, do you like Luna? Would you like to know about internationally loved Korean music girl group Luna? Have you streamed Luna's new song? Yeah, after all of that, I received an email from her and I was like, great, crisis avoided. Little did I know, there was a bigger crisis on the horizon, aka this whole video thus far. Interrupting the conclusion of my story to say this was the day I got approved for my second degree. We'll talk more about that in a life update video or something, but it was immensely exciting. All this footage is just me like leaving school. I don't know. Um, here's me putting my scooter into the vehicle I use. And then I looked into my water cup that night and the shapes the light made in it were very similar to the shapes I was drawing in my art pieces, so I thought that was cool. Okay, I interrupted my own story, but in conclusion, that is how this whole illustration thing got started. You know, I got the email and she was like, I have this opportunity for you and I hope you will check it out. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm down for this because one, I'm not so good at saying no. And two, I wanted to give it a whirl anyway. And three, I forgot I have classes that currently eat up my time like a vacuum cleaner. And the workload combined is making me two steps away from losing my marbles. So that was my story. Sorry if you didn't care about the story. But now let's talk about this last piece. So she didn't make the cut for the contest, but I wanted to combine the first two styles I did into one piece. And I just had a solitary figure with some paper cutouts on the side. But the feedback there was that the purple pieces drew the eye away from the figure. So I did edit those out in the end. I do like the pose and movement of the final piece. And it was a good way to wrap up the whole project, I think. But here I'm just writing the light rail again to get a final stamp of approval from my teacher for my submissions. And then I went back to school to scan all the artworks. Now I'm going to do a reading of my artist statements. My illustrations encapsulate the idea of metamorphosis, commonly known as the life cycle of a butterfly. This collection aims to portray unity within diversity. Like the wings of a butterfly, each figure in the composition mirrors the other, creating synergy rather than opposition. By linking each woman together through flowing ink strokes, there is a sense of emergence from a chrysalis. It takes courage to embrace oneself in a society fraught with standards, and the boldness of the line work along with the depth of color represent that. The garments themselves are intended to fit the wearer in all aspects of their life, body, ethnicity, or religion. The colors, depending on the orientation of the piece, can be seen as developing or coalescing. The clothes draw inspiration from high fashion with the exaggerated silhouettes while incorporating casual wear to reaffirm the idea that everyone has a place in fashion no matter what. 2. My second piece places the emphasis on delicacy, greatly contrasting the bold appearance of the first work. The design elements are directly inspired by butterfly wings with flowing edges and pleated designs. The continuation of the butterfly motif symbolizes positivity and draws similarities between each figure, furthering the theme of unity. The colors are meant to draw the eye into the work itself, creating depth and highlighting the specific traits of each garment as each clothing design is meant to suit the wearer.